All right, today I'm gonna to show you how I painted this fender using Rust-Oleum's Ultra Matte Black. Very requested video. All right, you're gonna need the Ultra Matte Black from 2X, it's a paint plus primer, so no primer is absolutely needed, but it only helps if you have primer. You will also need some Duplicolor grease and wax remover. Um, you'll basically just sprinkle it on and then wipe it in before you sand. It's pretty good stuff. You can use Rust-Oleum as well. So I'm gonna show you up close on the fender um, at the damage. It does have just quite a few held ends. That's mainly the majority of the damage. Um, the clear is faded in a few spots as well. Sorry about the camera, guys. But it's really dirty. Um, pretty good scratches in there. But overall, it's not a horrible fender. It's just a spare junk fender I have. So I'm gonna show you using this as a demonstration. This isn't gonna be going on the car. I have a Black & Decker sander I bought from Walmart for like 30 bucks. Come with sandpaper, which is pretty cool. I won't be using the 120. It also came with this bag attachment. It goes on the back. I highly recommend putting it on. It'll keep the dust down a lot, which is what you're gonna to wanna to do. We will be using 220 grit hook and loop five inch disc, but I usually like 320 because it doesn't leave as deep as sand scratches, but this is all I have, so that's what we're gonna use. Now basically you're going to want to sand all the larger surface areas first, um, the most flat areas first. You won't be able to get to many curved spots with the power sander, you will have to do that by hand, but we have a solution for doing it by hand as well. Just make sure not to burn through all the edges because if you go down to bare metal, you will have to prime over those with a self-etching primer to protect it. Um, but basically, I'm just gonna sand these larger areas and then we will remove the side trim piece that's right there on the fender. It's just a couple clips on the back side because we wanna get all that sanded. Now this fender won't be going on the car, so it's not as important, but if you're doing this on your car and you're taking your fenders and doors off and doing the long process to make it done, you're gonna want those off. So definitely pop the little clips out on the back side. It just takes some needle nose pliers or something to pop them out. And that thing shot aggressively. Uh, you're gonna want one of these little foam things. They sell them at AutoZone really cheap. Put the sandpaper on it. That'll help you get in the curved areas because it's more flexible. But I'm gonna go ahead and uh, sand this. And uh, after that, we'll just go ahead and sprinkle some of that wax and grease remover let it soak in and then wipe it down. You will make sure to use a clean rag on this because you don't want a dirty one. Wipe it down with a tack cloth. Now we have the Ultimate 2X paint. We're gonna shake it up really well. After you shake it up, you will want to purge it away from the project, uh, just to kinda clear the nozzle, and then you'll start painting. Now this is the sweeping motion I do on my first coat, typically. I lay it kind of lighter. Actually, I lay it thick, but for the sake of everyone else, I will show you how to lay it lighter. You're not gonna want it to look absolutely perfect on your first coat, unless that's what you're going for, but a lot of people don't know how to control that. It will run very easy if you lay it on thick like I do. I've been doing this since I was 16 years old on vehicles. Before that, it was bicycles, so I have a lot of years of experience. I'm 29 years old now. Um, been doing this for a very long time, so I know how how to lay it without getting runs. But basically, you're just gonna coat it. If there's a little bit of areas showing through where you can still see some of the fender, just make sure to cover them. It doesn't have to be covered super thick or anything, but you'll basically just cover it like this. So I'm going to just lay this on. Make sure not to paint in direct sunlight on a super hot day or with the wind blowing like I was. Uh, the wind 
takes the paint and doesn't allow it to actually get onto the project. So try to make sure the conditions are just right. Um, if you can't, then try to make the conditions right by putting up a tarp or something so where you still have visibility to see what you're doing. And this is basically what it'll look like on the first coat, kind of hazy, not absolutely perfect. Unless that's what you're wanting to do, then just make it to where it looks like a solid black sheet of glass. Let it dry a little bit and you can see there's still some spots. Um, it's not fully dry, so we're gonna definitely have to let it dry more. All right, we let it dry for about 10 minutes. Um, still little spots, but we'll go ahead and apply the second coat. Now this is the important coat if you ask me. Uh, if you're only doing two coats, this is the one where you're going to want to lay it a little bit thicker. As you can see, I'm a little closer and I'm laying it like 50% overlay. Kind of like you're cutting grass, you want one wheel to be sticking outside the line. Um, I don't know if you know what that means. If you've never cut grass, it probably won't make sense. But basically make it to where it's solid and it's all wet looking. Um, you're going to want to chase the wet edge basically and make sure that it stays wet. So I'm going to go ahead and stop talking and you can listen to the music and watch how I do it. For beginners, you guys might want to get one of these attachments. Um, I built a tolerance up so it doesn't hurt my finger or forearm um, doing it without one of these. I prefer not to use these. They work good, but I just prefer not to use them. I just don't like them. So there's the black sheet of glass look I was talking about where it looks like it's really high gloss. This is wet, so this is how it will look when it's wet. Once it dries, it'll look a lot better, but you won't have lines in it if you keep it glossy like that. So this is how it looks after about five minutes of drying. Um, the wind is blowing, so it dried a little bit faster. After about 24 hours, it'll be really even. You do want to put a matte 2K clear over this if you want it to last a long time. But overall, it looks pretty good. Um, just the hell dents that are there, that's kind of one of the reasons you want to make sure your body work is in order before you do black. Black shows everything. Um, you can see those held ends are pretty obvious there. But it looks overall pretty good. But yeah, for a $3 can of paint, this stuff works really well. Now right here you can see those scratches that are deep into the paint. Um, I could have sanded those out with that 220, then stepped up to 320, but I wanted to show you what it looks like if you don't sand properly. Uh, you'll definitely see those. And the held ends as well. You can definitely see those held ends are pretty prominent. They stick out. But if you're not worried about the held ends, then I say go for it. Looks pretty good. But that's basically the final product. Um, that'll be it for this video. So definitely stay tuned to both channels. If you haven't subscribed to my new channel, link will be in the description. It's mostly for Honda work, so if you're into Hondas, definitely check out that channel. It'll be growing soon. Already at over 100 subscribers in a day, so it's definitely growing pretty quick. Uh, definitely like the video, drop a comment, and let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching the video. Stay tuned, and God bless.